Welcome to the Talk with Clouds podcast. Your host is Katie Ann, an island girl on a journey with her guests to learn about their backgrounds, businesses, passions, experiences, life lessons, and wins. Come and laugh, cheer, learn, and plan with us. My friend, take some time to come and talk with Clouds. Hello world, welcome to Talk with Clads. My name is Katie Ann and I'll be your host for today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you doing? How has your week been going? It has been so much that has been going on in the world from an entertainment perspective, um, a humanitarian, a peace study perspective, a business um perspective you know that there is a war that's going on right now between russia and the ukraine and with the war come humanitarian efforts um it's also affected the stock market drastically i mean this war in the u.s the the war uh made all the stocks go down some people may look at it as a time to buy um if if there are stocks that you wanted to buy before um but i know oil if you buy gas in the u.s it is on another level and it's probably going to continue um going up today was actually a decent day where energy actually did good in the stock market health services did good communication um i think consumer durable non-durables did good um but anything retail or commercial services um uh technology that didn't do so well um but you know that's the start market for you it goes up and it's it goes down (laughs) i think that's the um predictability of it i um in watching the news or the stock market i should say today it says the biggest gainers was fedex which kind of makes sense because it's um transportation and it's also global transportation um, but the oil companies, Occidental and Marathon Oil, that actually did really, really, really well. So if one of your goal was to get into the stock market and you have some money saved and you are willing to take that risk, it may be worth it um, for you to just buy some some really good stocks that are, I like to say, on discount right now and hold on to it. And then, um, you know, hopefully things will 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 get a little bit better. I know um, Facebook, which is now uh, Meta, um, they their stocks fell, and that's that has some some things going on with both um, the space that they're in, the metaverse, um, and um, you know, Google is set to do a split in july so i I love google but i always found that it was a little bit expensive so it may be a time to grab it when it's because when it splits i think tesla did that where it split but now it's slowly climbing apple did a split last year um waiting for amazon to split so i can get in because amazon is 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 expensive but we will see so i am not a professional stock person so always seek the advice of a professional uh, stock person do your research and then if as i said if you have the extra money to do to get into stocks or just start a little you know because the goal is to create um generational wealth and stocks you know if you have some solid uh companies um that uh, have a historic um track record of performing then that's something that you can explore because it it, it is a path to generational wealth and all you know who doesn't want generational wealth for themselves and their families so i i a question that i i got was hey i'm interested in starting my business and i i, I kind of got it a lot which i i found interesting because i'm just like so if i'm gonna do something it's 10 toes in um but i said you know let me let me just bring it up on this podcast because here i'm I'm bringing on business owners and um 
you know, why not just talk about one, how to start a business and why you should start a business. Uh, you know, you don't, I'm not saying I am not advising you to go quit your job. Um, cause you should know if you can afford to quit your job or not. I am in a space where my nine to five funds, my passion, which is what I'm doing. So I still have a nine to five, but I do have my own business also, which is something I'm passionate. About. I'm passionate about both actually, but I also want to be my own boss. And I feel like if I work for someone else, it does not give me the path to generational wealth. It gives the owner or the employer uh, the path of generational wealth. And I want to con- um, create something for my children, my grandchildren, my great grandchildren, and many generations to come. So that's my mindset. But I would say before you start your business, like what are you passionate about? Um, you know, because if you're getting that nudge, oh, I want to start my business, there may be, a, there is a reason behind why you start your business. But you have to figure out, one, what you're passionate about, and two, what what area, what, what's that need that you you will be serving? Because you also want, whether it's a product or a service, you want to have a niche where customers feel like there is a, a need for your product. Otherwise, you may be passionate about it, but it's still going to sit on a shelf. So I'd say when you are a business owner, you, you're, you're following your passions, right? And you are fulfilling your dream um, that, you know, I work for someone and I, I like what I do, but it's not fulfilling my passion to the 100th power. So uh, having your own business allows you that freedom where you're in charge of creating your, your business, your vision from the ground up, and you can shape your company into something that you're proud of because at the end of the day, it is your vision. It's your legacy. It also offers you the opportunity to um, support non for profits. I've had uh, quite a few non for profits on um, this platform because that's something that I am passionate about. And uh, you know, my passion, my passion, my own business allows me the and God has blessed me with the platform to bring. Um, non for profits on. So one of the, the most fulfilling parts of becoming an entrepreneur is setting up your own company to have that social gain. And if you look at a lot of organizations, they have what their community statement is, what their social justice statement is. Uh, you can opt to support um, non, non, non for profit charities or community efforts that have profit. You know, you, you can say, okay, I'm going to sow seed into this business uh, and, you know, have that be a part of what your your organization, whatever your passion is. Um, and it, having your own business, if you are successful and successful, you know, it, it's, it's based on what success, success for everyone is different. So you can achieve, it allows you to achieve financial um, independence. So, I mean, you may start a business and go, oh, I'm starting the business just to have financial um, comfort. But from the ground up, you just have to have the mindset, like maybe for the first two years, you may not have that revenue coming in as much as you want. But once you're cultivating your business goals and um, cultivating that that mindset and building your brand, building a loyal customer base, it can become a very lucrative business. And you know what? You can aspire to wealth. There's no reason why you can't achieve a goal of wealth with your own business if that's what your um, dream. You know, starting your own business has a benefit of work you can start with a wage or salary um or you can build an enterprise for growth and then you may sell it and make millions i i think um i think one of the jenner sisters did that with their makeup line um and then having your own business allows you to control your lifestyle your schedule now i'm not saying it's just gonna be you're gonna work (laughs) 
with a nine to five sometimes it's nine to five with a business it could be you know nine to nine nine to twelve um, just because you have to put in the work, but it does afford flexibility because it's your business. What you put in is what you're going to get out. As I like to talk to my sister, we say you eat what you, you kill, not literally, but more so, um, figuratively. Um, and there are tax benefits to starting your own business, right? Um, there are a lot of government programs such as the Small Business Association that support small businesses and seeks to um, reward whatever their end- endeavors, are, endeavors are with um, impressive tax incentives. So, But that's where, once again, you're going to seek the advice of an accountant um, or a financial planner to see what, because you don't want to land in jail just to make sure you're doing everything um, the legal way. And having your own business is the only way to have true job security. You don't have to worry about the stress of climbing the corporate ladder because and, and say, oh my God, I'm going to be promoted or not. Um, do I have to work 50 hours to be promoted? Do I have to get this title to be, to be this and make this income? Your business allows you to say okay this is my job this is my organization this is my job this is my job security and um you know and if you choose to do like a family business you could be providing jobs for other members of your family as well but one of the most important thing of knowing that with you having that true job security is that your destiny is in your your own hand. You don't have to worry about a, a layoff because guess what? It's your own business. Uh, another advantage of having your own business is that you become an expert and you're able to broaden your skill sets. You know, you're learning as, as a business owner, you're learning to wear different hats. Uh, you're becoming a marketer. Um, you have to make sometimes HR decisions, <laughs> um, a planner, <laughs> um, if you have a website, you know, maybe a website designer, cause if you can't afford to do one or knowing how a street, how to strategically navigate so you can make the best de- decision for your business while spending the least money. So some things you may have to outsource, um, or you do it yourself. Uh, but it's you're still broadening your your um, knowledge base by doing the different types of um, skills. For me, I had to learn how to market. So I was watching what other people were doing. I was doing my research. I was listening to YouTube videos, and then I I was also practicing. Some things worked well. Um, some things did not. I also outsourced because at times there were, I didn't have the time available, uh, to do it. So, you know, I, I did outsource some marketing things, but what I, and, and then I was like, okay, financially, this is going to hit my, hit me real quick. I have to pivot and learn a different way how to, to, to navigate this marketing because marketing will take your budget. Let me tell you that. But with you, having your own business, you get to be creative. It's up to you to decide what the type of business, what your business will produce, sell, or what types of services it will order. And that that's exciting because guess what? You are creating your own destiny. And with my business, I don't know if you can hear my little dog is in the back. I mean, they are piped up. As when you talk about flexibility, because I am working from home. Um, so rather than following the formula of those who came before you, you're looking at a chance to develop a concept or an idea that somebody, um, that nobody has ever done. So even if you stay with like a mainstream product or service, being an entrepreneur allows you to find a new way to think um, how can I solve this problem by thinking outside the box? And that's when the creative juice is going. Because I love problem solving. 
and I, I I'm inquisitive by nature I ask a lot of questions anyone that knows me will tell you that and I'm always thinking how can I do this outside of the box how can I streamline this process how can I do this differently so knowing that each day brings new challenges exciting opportunities and a chance to engage your passion is enough to start your to start your own business so you have made the decision that you're going to start your own business you know what the advantages are or what the incentives are there are some dis- disadvantages to it because you could lose your the shirt off your back um, but that's the risk you know is and you have to say to yourself is this risk worth the reward and this is where planning will come in because you want to take a risk but you want to make a calculated risk right you want to be an owner versus a renter nothing wrong with renting though you know because owners need renters but it's it's, it's, it's just a, a saying okay people no offense but you're like i want to be the owner of my own destiny and so i'm going to start my business i am going to be 10 toes down i am going to do the research to start my own business and then i'm going to plan so i'm going to give you some quick steps before um what you should do when you are starting your own business and these are things that i have done and and this is for small large uh businesses and hopefully you can avoid some of the silly mistakes that I made when I started my own. Clad's resources and consulting values its customers. Our planner footsteps to my vision is a 13 month planner that can be used for five years. It walks you through SMART goals, SWOT analysis, action planning, and holds you accountable through three monthly check-ins. We work only with top quality materials, innovative designs, and verified suppliers, which are guaranteed to deliver to our high expectations because when it comes to our customer satisfaction, there's no room for compromise. Made with high quality PU leather and paper planner helps you focus on achieving your goals by giving you a sense of personal and professional satisfaction. Some of the amazing features of this product Vision Board Planner, Luxury Pen, 8GB USB Flash Drive, Wireless Mouse, Ultra Elegant Packaging Box, available in five stunning colors, black, red, gold, pink, navy blue. Material, PU Leather, 13-month planner, elastic band for easy handling. Our Footsteps to My Vision is available at Amazon, Facebook, Instagram, our website, and at Walmart. You may also follow us at www.cladsresources.com, Instagram, Clads Resources, Facebook. You're listening to Talk with Clads. Find more resources online at cladsresources.com. Now back to the show with your host, Katie Ann. It is really important to do market research um on what types of product or um service you're going to order um offer i'm sorry when you're starting your own business because market research will tell you if there's an opportunity to turn your idea into a successful um business it it allows you to gather information about like your um potential customers and businesses already operating in that um area and it it allows you to have that uh competitive uh advantage so when i say research 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 i'm saying research 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 for a reason because you need to know what you're 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 getting into because you may think oh whatever i'm doing is going to be is great but that research is going to give you the 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 actual factual information also the next step that you want to do is you want to write a business plan because the business plan is the foundation of your business it's it's pretty much around a road map of how you're going to structure run and grow your new business and a lot of times when you're looking for funding they are going to ask you for that business plan. 
Now, speaking about funding, um, you know, you need to know how you're going to fund your business. Are you going to fund it by um, seeking outside resources or do you have the money to start your business? So your business plan will help you to figure out how much money you will need to start your business. And if you don't have that amount on hand, you will need to either raise the money somehow or borrow the capital. And then what's important next is that you're going to pick a business location. Um, a lot of people are, are, are moving away from brick and mortar as a, if, especially if you're entrepreneurs and it's a service product, even if it's a actual physical product. Um, that you're offering, you know, you have um, platforms such as Amazon, Walmart, where you can actually send the product directly to them and then um, they'll ship it out for you. So your business location is going to be an important decision that you will make, whether you're going to set it up as a brick and mortar business or you're going to launch an online store. And these types of choices that you make for your business will affect whatever taxes, legal requirements, and um, structure. So speaking about structure, business structure. So when I say business structure, I mean the legal structure um, that you're going to, you know, is this an LLC? Is this an S-Corp? Is this a partnership? Um, it's important for you to know um, the business structure for the product or service that you're going to choose because the business structure is going to influence everything from day-to-day -day operations. It's going to affect your personal assets that may be at risk. Um, it's going to affect your taxes. It also gives you whatever legal protections and benefits. So you need to know it's important. It's very, very important um, to, to decide what is going to be a business structure. And you're going to need the business structure information when you are registering your business. Um, also, what's your business name? Um, you know, it's not as easy as you think to pick the perfect name. Um, so you want when you're um, choosing your business is to choose a business name that reflects your brand. It captures who you are. It captures your spirits, your passion. And you also want to do this. You want to make sure that it's not being used by someone else. And that, again, is where the research is going to come in. Um, very, very handy for you. So you want to choose a business name, again, that reflects your, your brand identity and it doesn't um, clash with the different types of goods or services that you offer. Um, my business is Class Resources and Consulting and a, a, a product that we offer is the, vision, is the vision board planner, Footsteps to My Vision. And Footsteps to My Vision seems, oh, that's pretty easy. But I had to go back, make sure no one else is using it. And then um, the information that I put in it, I also, in the book itself, the planner, it's copyrighted. So if anyone tries to um, copy the information or present it like it was their information, it's something that I, could le I have legal right to say, hey, this is information that I put together. You know, this is, this is, this is KDN's property um so register your business name to protect it um the entity name protects you at state state level um also look into trademarking um because trademarking protects you at a federal level so when you register your business name to protect it um that state level if you want to trademark your service or product that's um federal level you have to also remember that um sometimes doing business as doesn't really give you um, legal protection, but it might be legally required. A lot of people may have uh, do business as a different name, and then the business is called another name on the back end. So there are some things, that, and that's why it's important to sit with a a, a professional. Maybe it's an attorney. Um, also, that 
you know, to go over these types of requirements so you know how best to protect yourself. And then if you have a website, go ahead and and, and get that the dona- name main domain name because it protects your business website address. I don't know if you remember many years ago, I think it was Google. Someone forgot forgot to um, renew the business website and someone bought it. And then uh, Google had to pay a substantial amount to recuperate back um, that the website. So always remember to register um, your business name. Choose your business name and then register the business name and make it legal to protect your um, brand. You know, you want to make sure you're always protect, 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 protect protect that brand um next step that you want to do is you want to get a federal and state tax id Uh, many people may know it as an ein number and the ein is your employer identification number and it's important to start and grow your business if you want to open a bank account they're going to ask you um for an ein number if you're going to pay taxes um it's they're gonna ask you for your ein number and your ein number is like a social security um but it's it's a social security for your uh business all right and that's and you may want to you know i would say well when you get the federal and state tax id sit with an accountant because if you're going to pay employees um if you're going to operate as a corporation there are other things that are going to be involved and you may need to apply for different types of license and permits. Um, the EIN number is free and you should do it right after um, your registration. Um, also, if you want to do a, te- a tax deferred pension plan, um, you're, you're definitely going to need it. So make sure you speak with an attorney, a tax, ac- a tax accountant that specializes in those types of um, businesses, in in business, you don't want someone that's just thinking or saying, "Oh, I think you may do this, or you should do this." Sit and speak with an accountant, tax professional, attorney, just to make sure that you're protecting yourself and you're going through the right um, processes. If your business requires different license and permits, to make sure that it's running smoothly and also to stay legally compliant you will need to apply for those um, licenses and permits. And that's where the attorney may come in very helpful. And each license or permit may vary. It may vary by the industry that you're in, um, the state that you're in, um, whatever lo- location, it could, you know, city-wise. And, and it, it may have some other factors that may affect it. And last but not least, then you should open a business bank account right and you can do a, a small uh, business checking account that can help you handle like your legal um, tax day-to-day issues it's really easy to set up uh, or open a business account bank account when I went to open uh, one for my business um, they just looked at the they did go to make sure that it was registered uh, they needed the EIN number, and then um, they'll advise you on different types of merchant services that you can, you know, take depending on what you want to pay. Um, that can accept credit, debit card, and I'll, I'll tell you, there are also different spaces apart from the account. Like you could do PayPal, you can do Square where they send you the, the uh, little chip for free, but they charge you on the sales that you do. So you want to make sure um, that you do your research on, one, if it's a product or service, what is the best way to collect payment, how am I going to bill, and those are things that you may want to have the conversation when you're opening your account because a lot of bank account offers perks that, uh, a business bank account offers perks that won't come, special perks, and that won't come with like a standard uh, personal ac- uh, account. And um, when you have a bank account, you know, it, it gives you protection. Uh, business banking um, offers uh, some types of liability to protection. Some liability protection. I don't even know. I can't even pronounce my words. 
um, to keep your business funds separate from your um, personal funds. And then the merchant services also offers that purchase protections for your um, customers and ensure that your their personal information is um, secure. Also, when a, a customer pays you with credit card, they want to make sure that, you know, hey, my inform- it, it shows professionalism and it shows, hey, you know, this person, it, it, it speaks to your brand. It looks like you, you're you prepared, um, you know what you're doing versus, oh, cash only or, you know, like, just cash at me. You know, because at the end of the day, your business is your brand. You are the brand of your business, right? Um, and also bank account, bank accounts give you purchasing power. Um, credit card accounts uh, can help to make like the startup purchases, you know, establish like a credit history for you. And, you know, some things that you need to purchase, it, it gives you more buying power. So very important to um, have a bank account when you are starting your business. All right. Re- just remember. You need to do your research, right? Research, 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 research. You're going to hear me say that so much time. Um, you got to pick, okay, where's my business location? Like the type of business, the structure. Make sure you register, get the, the, the necessary federal and, and state ID that is required. Apply for license, permits, uh, and then open a, a business account and then get business insurance um, because you want to make yourself as least liable um, as possible. Kind of, For me, I, I kind of stepped away where my, my personal assets and my professional assets are a little bit diff. They're separated. Okay. But, you know, not everyone wants that. And that's where the structure of the business, um, you know, in defining what your structure is, um, will play a key role in in your business. So, good luck if you were, you know, hopefully this you found this podcast um, to be informative. As I said, I got a lot of quest. I've been getting a lot of questions. Hey, I don't know if I should start my business. What do I need to know? What I need to do to start my business? Get an attorney on. I think it was um, Robin and Robin, Robin Robinson and Associates. I know he's an attorney that specializes in um, small businesses, small and large businesses, um, in terms of giving advice. Uh, so you can refer back to that podcast. Uh, he had some great insights. Also, um, I'm gonna plug my sister. She's also an attorney, and she can give you feedback also on starting a business. So you want to make sure you you protect yourself as legally as much as possible um so you know i'm gonna plug my sister law office of tanika reed tanika c reed pa she's gonna kill me because i keep getting her law office because she's rebranding she's gonna be peeps people and she's doing really good so just protect yourself protect yourself as much as possible but at the end of the day if you decide that this is the journey that you want to go on this is the path that you want to go on I am telling you that it will be worth the reward because you are seeking. It's your passion. And, you know, you're doing what you love. And with that, with that comes um, that that self-fulfillment of happiness. So thank you, everyone. Best wishes to you on your journey. Hopefully, um, I I figured versus just answering one-on-one questions, um, I would just do a podcast about it. Hopefully, I was able to give you some insights. Just remember that I am not an attorney. I And the stock thing, I just love stocks. I always talk about it with my friends. And now you are my new family and friends. So, have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. And thank you so much for taking some time to talk with class. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a family, tell a family about this podcast. And thank you so much, guys. Bye. Thanks for listening. Find us on social media at Clads Resources and online at www.cladsresources.com. Our planner, Footsteps to My Vision, is also located on our website or on Facebook, Instagram, or Amazon. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and check back weekly for new episodes. 
Until next time, keep creating your footpath to your vision.